Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Weekend Trucking. And if you watched the last video, you know that we just wrapped up a family vacation using the wife's SUV. And it reminded me of the days when I did not have an auxiliary fuel tank. So in today's episode, we're going to dive into the math, the numbers of fueling with and without an auxiliary fuel tank. So we're gonna take an example. If we leave from my house, head to Elkhart, and then go to Nampa, Idaho, and then deadhead back. And what that trip looks like when you just have your basic normal stock setup, and then when you have the auxiliary tank setup. And I'll be honest with you, I was a little taken back at the actual saving. So I went in, I used our fuel app where you can go in and see what the discounted rates are. So I mapped out it and it probably took a good 30, 40 minutes to map out kind of as if I would do a trip on the fly as I'm going, just seeing where the cheapest fuel stations are, where it makes sense to stop and, you know, put a hundred gallons of fuel in. And it, I was kind of surprised at, I don't want to say the lack of savings, but the insignificance at just one trip. But what I was really caught off guard with was the amount of time. And that's what we're going to dive into is just, you know, the, the pros and the cons and just really doing the math on if it makes sense to have a auxiliary fuel tank and what it looks like in terms of, you know, one trip, if you're doing, you know, one long trip a week, and then on a month, on a year, on a five-year basis, you know, what are the savings? What are the benefits to adding this to your truck setup? So again, we're gonna go from Iowa to Indiana, to Idaho, back home, one trip, I don't actually know how many trips a person can do within a week if you're full-time doing this, but I figured I would do just a longer trip where we can just see it on a bigger scale than say a simple 500 to 1,000 mile trip. So again, just to preface it, I've went through, used our fuel finding app to see where the cheapest places are. Now, how I have it set up is we have stock and fuel tank. So with the stock, what I had said was just to keep things simple is there's a 30 gallon tank with my numbers. So when I am unloaded, I get 20 miles a gallon. It, it always ends up being right around 20 miles a gallon. Um, those are going to be for both. So unloaded. And then when I'm loaded, I actually, I'm averaging at like 11.2 miles per gallon right now. But I figured again, keep it simple, 10 miles a gallon. And then my fuel tank's actually, I wanna say at 25 or 27 gallons. But again, just keeping it simple, rounding. And then the auxiliary. So we'll say there's 120 gallons between the stock tank and your auxiliary tank. So when we just dive into that, you know, we can look at unloaded, we're at a 500 mile radius. And then when we're loaded with just the stock set up again, just saying we're getting 10 miles a gallon, 30 gallons for a fuel tank, we're getting 300 miles. Jumping over here, this is when things get interesting. So unloaded, you're gonna get 2,400 miles. Again, if you're averaging 20 miles a gallon. And then loaded, we're at 1,200 miles. Now. We don't wanna just drive the truck all the way to E. So what I did when I was just looking at this was I just put uh, a limit on there, a range, an upper range of when I had to fuel up. So just giving myself a, a mile radius on, I can go up to, and it was 25 to 50 miles from either my loaded or my unloaded remaining miles. So it's not that we're driving it straight to E. Uh, there's been a few instances when I had the stock set up where I thought when I was loaded, I was like, oh yeah, I'll get to Council Bluffs. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it, uh, but luckily got there and was able to fuel up at typically the cheapest place there. And it's a pilot uh, in Council Bluffs. But so we're, we're playing it safe. We're 
being practical because obviously that's going to be hard on your truck if you're driving it down to E every single time before you fuel up. What I'm going to do to just save time is in the description, I'm going to put down the breakdowns of stock and auxiliary fuel tank. And what I'll do is stop one, stop two, so on and so on. So you'll see, okay, hey, this was where we got on the first tank. There was this many gallons left. We filled it back up to 30, so on and so on and so on. You don't wanna sit here and listen to me say all that. But throughout the entire journey, with the stock setup, there were 15 times that we stopped to get fuel. We go over to the 120 gallon setup and there were only five stops. And again, this is where it gets uh, really eye-opening in the sense of time is money. Now, price-wise, with the stock setup, we spent $670.82. That's with prices being where they are currently today as this video is being recorded. On the auxiliary fuel tank side, this is where you're able to be a lot more choosier on where you're fueling up. And that's where using that app to see, okay, hey, I'm going to bypass this one or I'm only going to put enough in here to get me to the cheapest fuel on the entire route comes in to play. So we spent 641.60. So initially, I mean there's a there's a significant savings when you do the math uh and you're you're doing this full time. That's an extra $30 per trip. But now let's look just a little bit deeper at the numbers and let's look at not just the one trip savings, but let's look at if you had four trips in a month. Again, you may be getting more trips or more mileage in on this, I'm not sure, but I figured this would be a good indicator on what the savings are, not just in terms of you know money being saved and, and kept in your pocket, but the eye opener was being saved on the amount of time you don't have to get out of your truck. Now, how I'm defining a trip is just simply, uh, we're just saying 15 minutes per trip, whether it takes longer or less. Again, we're just going ballpark numbers so that we can really dive into the numbers and see, you know, is it worth it to get an auxiliary fuel tank? So I rounded up to 30, it was 29.22. I'm looking at my notes down here, um, but again, we'll say, 30 in savings by having the auxiliary set up. And then over here, it was five stops. So if you extrapolate that out into what is that with 15 minutes per stop, your 2.5 hours. So now we go one month. What does it look like? We're at $117. Again, I'm just rounding up or down to the closest dollar. And then we're at 10 hours. So again, the biggest thing to me that popped out as I was just writing all this out was the amount of time that you're saving by having an auxiliary fuel tank. I mean, we're also saving money, but that time, that's that's something that I didn't really think was that much being saved. So now let's look at one year. We're just over $1,400. Uh, it's like 1,402 and some change. But now we're at 120 hours, which that comes out to five days. So the same amount of work in terms of the same trip, if you're doing the same trip, again, essentially one time per week, but you're cutting off five days worth of stopping to refuel every 250 to 275 miles. So now let's say if you're somebody that's in this for the long haul, or you're really looking at, okay, if I'm going to be doing this down the road, does it make sense to just do it now? Well, let's look at five years. So now we're at just over $7,000. Um, but again, th that thing that really caught me off guard was the amount of time saved. And so over the course of five years, you're saving 25 days, essentially a month saved in terms of getting in and out of the truck and refueling. This is obviously saying that, hey, the prices of gas, I mean diesel, are always going to be the same. Let's actually hope they just keep or start going down and keep going down. But this is a video that I wanted to put together ever since I got my auxiliary fuel tank just in terms of really looking at the numbers. I know there's been several videos out there. Uh, High Mileage Helper has done a video that was really awesome and talked about, you know, that, that radius of, you know, where you're able to be really choosy with where you fuel up at. And this is just diving in a little bit deeper to really look at some hard numbers um, for what you can expect 
And again, the thing that, that you know is going to be saving you, you know, time, but really looking at it, the significant amount of time that you can be saving by having that auxiliary fuel tank. So I would say if you're on the fence of getting it, I would. Um, but uh, again, like the like high mileage helper had mentioned, you know, if you're someone that's kind of on the fence and you're not really sure if you're even gonna do this in a month or so, you know, maybe it's not the best time for you to get it right away because, well, you're only saving $30 a trip given the numbers with how they are right now. And the reality is over a year's time, you still haven't paid back your initial investment in the fuel tank, um, but you start looking at the time that you're saving and then the extra amount of money that you're able to make. So you have some compounding uh, factors going in here. You may find it extremely valuable and worth it to get it right away. I know with my setup, it was, let's get a few runs under my belt. Let's get some cash coming in. And then again, when I was at Dan's service center, when I had overheard uh, someone talking about it to a, a newer driver, and as he was talking about, you know, hey, what's it matter how much it costs? You know, it's it, it's something that will pay for itself. Now he had said it'd pay for itself in 10 days. And I was like, okay, hey, sign me up. And then I signed up to get one within the next week. But, you know, it doesn't pay for itself right away in terms of just cash right in your pocket from the, the trips that you're doing by themselves, but it starts to save you a lot of time and it's saving you money every single trip. So is it worth it? Of course, but it may not be the right decision if you're somebody that's just kind of on the fence. Hey, let me just try this out. Or you're more doing it for a recreational or retirement type of a, of a gig where it's, you know, Hey, I'm going to make money. I'm going to travel the country and vacation my way back. You may not have interest in it. Although again, the ability to not have to get in and out of your truck and worry about where the next truck stop is, is a nice peace of mind to have. I know that when I went to Idaho back within the first month of when I started, it wasn't bad. But then as I went down through Nevada to go down to California, there were a few times where I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it to another gas station or where even one was because I was in the middle of nowhere. So the peace of mind of having this is kind of priceless, but you could definitely do without. Hopefully this was helpful. If you found any value in it, please like, subscribe, share, and I will continue to keep pushing these videos out. Again, thank you for everybody that has subscribed. I think we are at close to 900 subscribers at the time that I'm recording this, and that's just mind blowing. So you guys are awesome. I appreciate the comments. Let's keep it positive down there and help each other learn as we are, at least myself, new in this endeavor, learning as we go. So that's it until the next one.